up Beaver Tribe, what's up world? I am Bianca and this is my channel. So for today, I'm going to be sharing to you guys a couple of tips to help you get far and not feel frustrated about the game that is Little Dragons Cafe. Now, these tips, which I actually wrote down um, while I was playing, um, they are some things that people might overlook as they are playing the game, or it may be something that they've forgotten um, the game has actually told them about or instructed them about in a tutorial that they probably just breathed by. Now, they're not really um, in any particular order of importance. Um, as I've said, I just wrote them down as I was playing the game and I thought that this, these tips might actually be helpful for those who are just starting out or for those who are having a little bit of trouble playing the game that I have really started to get into and I'm sure that most of you will find that to be um, the same experience as you move along into the story of Little Dragon's Cafe. Before we begin, we've got new content almost every day, so be sure to hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to be a part of the notification squad by clicking on the bell icon as well to get notified whenever new content comes out. So without further ado, let's get right into the tips. So first off, what is Lil Dragon's Cafe or LDC? What kind of game is it? Well, basically, um, the pre premise of the game is that um, you are controlling one of a pair of twins, um, a boy and a girl, whose mother has gone into a sort of a coma. And that this coma was due to the fact that she has the, a blood of a dragon within her, which means that she's half human and half dragon. Now this is something that the children did not know about prior to it being um, divulged to them by an old man who goes by the name of Pappy. Now, Pappy gave, gives these kids a dragon egg and instructs them to hatch the egg, um, take care of the dragon inside of it, and help it grow to become a healthy um, dragon so that it would end up helping them cure their mother. Now, in this game, um, your task of maintain your task with maintaining uh, your mother's cafe or the mother's cafe, and in order to do that, you are required to harvest um, ingredients, catch fish, um, deal with the staff and their problems, um, deal with the customers and their problems, and basically um, help your dragon grow by feeding it delicious food. Well, that's according to the old man. Now, the game itself doesn't um, force you to do anything in a particular pace compared to Harvest Moon, of which um, it shares the same producer. Basically, you are given uh, these objectives, you are tasked complete, but under no um, time limit. You can simply enjoy the game, um, uh, take care of the cafe, um, explore if you like, um, without having to worry about a cutoff time. Now, because of that, some people tend to miss out on some things or do things completely different than others. Now, these tips are just some things that I have discovered for myself. I'm not sure if others know about this or if other people have talked about it, but I'm going to share my own take on these tips for LDC. So the first and foremost tip I have written here is always check your progress tab in the main menu. Now this is something that may be overlooked because the game actually tells you what to do at some point, but sometimes what the game tells you um, is just a fraction of what you actually need to do. And other times, or most often, the game doesn't tell you what exactly you need to do. So sometimes you may think that you're just waiting for another objective to pop up, when in fact another objective has already been given to you and you only need to check on the story tab 
in the main menu. So basically, instead of wasting time um, scrambling around trying to figure out what you have to do next, you must make it a sort of ritual to always check your story tab um, after each scene or cutscene that passes since that's the only way um, you will know um, when to visit your cafe for instance since there are times when the game asks you to um, check on the cafe on a, on a particular or in a particular time of day like may it may be during the day during noon or at night time or it might give you also hints on where you can find a particular recipe fragment that you may need in order to progress the story. This second tip I have is actually something I wish someone would have told me prior to me playing the game. And this second tip is, as I've written here, in the beginning up until chapter 2, don't bother bringing food along, especially if you are heading into zucchini territory. Now, or zuchi, I forgot what um, those beasts are, but they're basically this um, large creatures on the map, um, four lion creatures on the map that, have, that are colored orange. Now you meet them first when you've unlocked um, the plane's heading to the witch's meadow, I think it's called. And these creatures, they charge at you when they see you. And if they bump into you, they would take whatever um, food you have cooked and food you have in your inventory. Now, why is it a bad idea to bring those food items with you during the early parts of the game? That's because your dragon doesn't actually need to be fed so much during the early portions of the game since the way their stamina depletes isn't as fast compared to when your dragon finally evolves and you're you're given the option to use dragon commands or dragon actions now those actions when you um, order your dragon to do something it depletes their stamina so you can either pet your dragon to regain their stamina or as the game tells us their health or you can feed them the food you've, co you've cooked um, so that they would regain the stamina they have lost. Now, as I've said early on, um, since the map you are given with or the area to explore you, have give you are given with isn't really that big and you can't really use any dragon actions, there's really no point in bringing food items with you. Now, if you don't bring food items, then the these beasts, these Suzuki or Zucchini, won't actually be able to do much to you other than bump into you and the, the character sprite just flickers, it doesn't really do any damage, there's no health bars here, not for you, um, it doesn't even hurt your dragon, so basically it's actually pointless to bring food items with you during um, the early parts of the game unless it is specified um, in your objective that you uh, have to bring a certain food to an NPC or a villager in order to um, obtain a new recipe fragment. Now my third and fourth tips are actually related to one another. So the third tip is always check your dragon's bed. Now the bed can be found as soon as you enter the second floor of the inn just before you find the doors leading to the twins and the mother's room. Now, why do you need to check um, the dragon's bed? Well, that's because you can obtain an item there every day, and that item is the dragon's manure. Now, as icky as that is, um, it's really advisable to get those um, get that dragon manure every day. Um, usually, the best time to get it is just after noon. Um, sometimes the manure isn't there yet during the morning, so just go back to the inn during noon, help out at the end of the time, and then go upstairs and pick the manure, or get the manure. Now, that manure is actually pretty useful um, for your harvesting needs. Now, you can use that on your... you can and you should use that on your garden as well as your um, fish hatchery, because it increases the items you've obtained and also increases the rarity of the items you've obtained. Now that's 
the same as well if you use it on the rock formations that provide items as well as the bushes that provide items. I haven't tried it on the trees. Um, I don't think you can use it on the caves that your dragon can also enter. Um, but I usually use mine on the garden as well as the hatchery since those uh, pro provide me with the most items or most ingredients that I can use for the cafe. Also related to that is the tip to always or never forget um, to harvest as many in as many spots as possible as whatever ingredients you obtain are added to the pool of possible ingredients that you can get in your garden. Now the same is true with when it comes to fishing. Um, whatever fish you obtain while you are fishing, as boring as the fishing mechanics are in this game, they are also added to the pool of possible fish you can obtain in your fish hatchery. Now, um, it's also worth noti noting that no matter if your ingredient count for a particular ingredient has reached 100, it's never a bad idea to have more of that ingredient as the game progresses, you'll realize that the ingredients um, are quickly depleted, so the more you have early on, the easier it will be for you. Um, the more you obtain the items or harvest the ingredients, um, the easier it is for your cafe to flourish, since what would you do without the ingredients? You can't cook anything without the ingredients. So the next tip I have is something that can easily be missed. Um, and it involves the recipe fragments. Now you can get recipe fragments from the crates and from talking with your um, with your staff and also from NPC quests that requires you to deliver a certain food to a hungry NPC. Now um, in regards with the um, recipe fragments from the crates, Sometimes um, locations you have explored or already, crates can still um, show up in those locations such as the beach and the slope after the bridge leading to the plains leading to the witch's meadow. Um, several times I have found different fragments there um, and also um, apart from recipe fragments, your staff can also give you full recipes that you don't need to find the extra fragments for or ask Pappy to um, convert into actual recipes. Which is why it's always a good idea to check back um, in the cafe during the working hours of the cafe um, because apart from keeping your staff from slacking, you can also boost their morale and also obtain items not just from them but also from the customers inside the cafe which is something you should also do. I mean, uh, talk to the customers. Um, they pro sometimes they provide higher rarity items than what you could actually find outside by uh, foraging or harvesting or fishing. Next is about um, the egg birds or the chickens in this game. Now early on you can capture um, several of the ordinary looking egg birds um, just after unlocking the next area or after the starting area you will be able to unlock the area after that and you will find um, the egg birds just grazing around there. You can capture those without any trouble just by um, going towards them and hitting the A button. Now later on in chapter 3 I believe you will also unlock a brand new area. Now in that area there is a higher variation of the egg birds. Now once you've unlocked those higher variations you can forget about getting um, a lot of those normal egg birds. You can like capture two and then just go and capture the other variety of the egg birds since those egg birds provide a higher rarity um, egg that you can use for your rest. Mm. Tip about the wild li wildlife and going back to the Zukidons, I finally got that name right, um, you can actually um, kill those enemies without having your dragon evolve. Um, you can get them to ram into the side of a cliff or a giant boulder and they will just 
turn into the drumstick items that represent whatever ingredients you can harvest from them. Um, the, the good thing about this is that since um, even with an involved dragon that you can order to hunt, sometimes the dragon takes quite a long time and you end up having to stay stationary um, for that dragon whistle so that you can order the dragon and the Zukidon will end up slamming into you and taking your um, your food items. So what I do is I just jump around and hope that the Zukidon will hit a cliff face that I'm near or the side of a mountain or a giant boulder. Similarly, you can simply just jump atop the Zukidon and you can um, instantly kill them. Now, this may take a lot of practice, but for those who would rather um, have their dragons hunt these animals, then the tip for that is that it's much easier if you sneak behind them. Now, this may be difficult to do, but there are certain places in the map that you can sneak around the Zukidon and keep yourself from being spotted. Now, use those to their, your advantage, especially when um, facing the powerful Zukidon. Um, you're gonna need that, uh, the meat from that beast uh, in one of the story quests in the game. So, there's this circular, um, area that you can find the powerful Zukidon and there's a space um, just beside the mountains that you can run around and stand and find an opening behind the powerful Zukidon. You can use that to surprise it by hunting it by your dragon or like I said you can just lure it to ram into a giant boulder or the side of a mountain or a cliff. Now let's talk about tips for running the cafe. Now the cafe is an important part of the game since there will be um, quest requirements that you need to be able to get to a certain reputation level for your cafe in order to progress. Now I actually have three um, tips here regarding um, your cafe. The first one is something that some people may tend to do, especially early on, and it's don't neglect the cafe. So please don't. That will make things harder for you since you will then have to focus on, uh, on running the cafe rather than exploring. What I actually do in my gameplay is that from the start of the morning, from the start when my character wakes up, up until um, around 10 a.m. I'm doing the exploring. Come 10 a.m. I use the teleport back to the cafe um, option that you can choose if you press uh, the minus button on the Joy-Con, um, which is actually pretty useful, especially if you've already traveled far. And then after noon, I um, go back to exploring and then only stop at around 6 when I have to go back to the cafe because that's another um, busy time for the cafe. And also I, I always make it a point to go back to the cafe whenever there's a prompt on screen that a staff member is slacking. Um, I hate slackers, so whenever that prompt um, comes up, I just hit on the minus button, go back to the cafe, um, talk with the staff that's slacking, and also help out. Because even if um, you don't help out, um, the reputation actually increases. But if you do, and if you um, reprimand the staff members that are slacking, um, your reputation, your cafe's reputation, increases um, faster than if you do not. Um, the next, I, the next tip I have regarding the cafe is switch your menu around to meet the desired taste of your current visitor. Now, I'm not talking about the um, random visitors that you have. I'm actually talking here about the story-related visitors. Now, so far I've um, only just met two of them: um, Poncho and now um, the the witch. I've whose name currently eludes me, um, and all uh, each of them have different tastes. Now, 
as far as I remember, Poncho likes sweet food, he hates bitter food um, and spicy food. And as for uh, the witch, I think Cecile or Seal or something like that, she hates um, anything that has potatoes in it. She hates anything that is sweet. So um, in order to uh, appease her appetite or their appetite, and also increase the reputation of your cafe, um, it's a good idea to switch the menu around depending on what they like. And also, um, you, the last tip I have here is always check your menu and the availability of ingredients for each menu item. Now, whenever um, the in-game clock strikes um, midnight, um, you get this report. Um, of how well your cafe did and also the option to check your ingredients now if you press that button it will give you your menu um, you actually have to press another button in, in order to see the which um, of your food food um, items or menu selections there have their ingredients on the red so that you can um, replenish those ingredients or forage to replenish those ingredients or you can do the easy way out, which is um, switch the menu to something that you still have ingredients for while you forage. That way, you can always maximize the 10 um, spaces for the menu um, with food uh, or menu items that actually have ingredients for them rather than letting one stay there that no longer has the necessary ingredients for Lucola to cook for your customers or for you to cook. Um, another good idea is to always check if you can add an additional ingredients to a menu item that you've already cooked since doing so um, updates the ingredients that you use and also but you don't really update your menu just by cooking. You actually have to uh, choose to update them and go through the process of adding them again to the menu and that's because the higher the star rating of your food is the more stamina your dragon recovers from it the higher the reputation of your cafe um, gets or, or obtains from uh, customers buying that particular food so it's, it's actually pretty um, important to check um, your menu menu as regularly as you can maybe even every day since um, uh, food upgrades which you obtain from Lucola can happen any time of the day um, you don't actually have to wait a full day um, to check on that you can check it um, like every hour if you want if you if you really can't find anything else to do you can do that. But anyway, those are the tips I have for this game. Now, if you have any other tips that I may have missed and you are playing this game as well, then don't hesitate to um, share it with us via the comments section below. Again, I'm not claiming to be an expert of this game. I just like this game so much. Um, I actually play it while I'm on the go um, whenever I can play on my PS4 because I'm still playing Spider-Man um, for the PS4 so L Little Dragon's Cafe is my go-to game for um, the handheld um, I'm playing it on the Switch so anyways that's all the time we have for today again I hope that was helpful and also um, thank you to all our new subscribers um, you guys are awesome <laughs> I hope you're enjoying this channel thus far and I'll see you all in the next video. Until then, dream on, fly on.